the empty man made me do it. Or maybe it was the candy man. Or maybe it was Freddy. I am confusion. Ah uh, yes, this is your man Z, and I am here to do a mini review of The Empty Man, which you can now catch on HBO Max. And I thought for Halloween, uh, since I'm such a horror buff, that we would throw in some horror movies, just some short reviews. I'll do a non-spoiler section, give you a little bit of uh, background on the movie, and then we'll move on to some spoilers just to kind of see, and I'll give you my recommendation. So, uh, The Empty Man, as you can see, is on, well, you can't say, but it's on HBO Max if you have that. And this is a strange one. Uh, it was kind of uh, a not completed merger type movie that got dumped in the theaters, I think, very briefly. And then uh, I don't know if it was even completed. So if we go to here, we'll, we'll look at the wiki for it. It was uh, written, directed, and edited by David Pryor based on a book by Cullen Bunn and Vanessa Del Rey's graphic novel of the same name, uh, published by Boom Studios. It stars James Badge Dale and a bunch of other... Stephen Root makes an appearance in it too. And originally it was filmed in 2017 and did not test well. But the final product is still considered a rough cut by um, the director's standards. And I kind of agree with that, but it has gained a cult following. And I think, uh, just from my early recommendation, that this is one worth checking out. I will say it's a little bit long. Uh, I don't have the exact runtime. I'll get it for you at some point here. Uh, but it seems like the movie itself, it, what's interesting, there's a 23 minute prologue and, and until you even get to the title screen. And that's a totally different movie than the movie that comes after it. It has a lot of inklings of previous movies like Candyman and the, the old Summon the Boogeyman type movie. There's even a part where they have written on the on, on a on a mirror where it says the Empty Man made me do it. Also reminiscent of Slender Man, all of those type of things. And then you combine that with uh, an element of The Ring. You not not necessarily Ringu, but the the mystery. It's more of a psychological thriller than I would say a straight up horror movie. And it gets kind of uh, confused as to what it wants to be. Does it want to be a like a unstoppable like it follows type movie where there's a boogeyman with a timetable of it coming to get you after a certain amount of time? There's a whole cast of teenagers that are in it, and like for, <laughs> then they disappear. Uh, from the actual movie so but I do think it has its merits it is really well I think it's really well directed there's some beautiful shots uh, I think it's actually for what it is edited pretty well uh, let's take a look at the Rotten Tomatoes score here so and this is from the initial release the critics gave it 75% it is a mind melter right it, it has a lot of twists and turns the audience gave it 39%, but I do think that it's because the audience could sense that this is maybe not a complete movie, but it, it it's not quite as cool as a, as a cult classic in my mind, like the void of like the more modern cult movies, uh, but it, it's not bad. There's definitely some really good elements to it. There's some really great production design. Uh, yeah, there's a series of mysterious dif dis disappearances in a small Midwestern town, maybe linked to a supernatural entity. Uh, the box, it was the runtime's two hours and 17 minutes, so it's a long one. And the whole entire movie is really propped up by the performance of this man here, James Badge Dale. You may know him from such movies as The Departed, 13 Hours, World War Z, and Iron Man 3, playing bit parts in all of those, but this was really him and his vehicle to, to shine. Uh, he, if he, if his performance wasn't so strong, this would have been pretty terrible. Uh, he really does carry the movie. I'm just going to go through some images. I really like this image here. Uh, this is one of the, like what really anchors the movie in something really creepy and cool. Uh, this is like an oversized skeleton. You don't really ever get a good explanation for what this is. And I think maybe the unfinished production and the lack of budget. You know, if, if this director had been given a larger budget and maybe, you know, better, more time to fix what he wanted to fix. 
you might have seen a better movie. This is reminiscent of Alien, if you think about it. Uh, but it has a, a unique, different design, especially the first 20 minutes all take place in Tibet, uh, which is a pretty interesting kind, kind of concept where there's four travelers and somebody seems to be possessed. So let's, let's move to spoilers, because some people seem to be a little confused about the ending. Uh, as far as, as the movie goes, it, it gets really convoluted because you, you start with this, uh, this prologue that is completely separate and has no connection until the very, very, very end where you're like, okay, and it's the loosest of connections. So, and, and there is a, a decent cast where some of these actors I think are pretty good. And, um, but <laughs> they're not in it that much because it's really all about the journey of, of James Dale, right? So essentially this man gets approached by this girl and uh, she tells him about like there's something going on and people disappearing or something like that. And there's like a cult. In fact, it's called Pontifex, which is Latin for bridge building, which is kind of connected to the beginning. And there's like, a whole, like I said, candy man element to it where they can summon this guy. So there's a handful of teenagers who summon the supernatural entity. So if you blow into a bottle and think about the empty man, apparently he comes. This movie didn't do itself any favors by connecting itself to anything. Like, it, like there's all these disparate parts that eventually kind of come together. So like, here's the group of teens summoning the empty man but half hour after the 23 minute prologue they're all you know like i said spoiler alert they're all dead and uh but the one girl seems to still be alive if you look for the clues they're all there like i kind of started to figure it out i don't think that the twist kind of comes out of left field but it's also uh it's very strange so long story short the empty man is this kind of cosmic horror demon thing that needs an empty vessel. The empty man is actually James Dale, the, the actor, the protagonist of this. He's been been created. He's not even a real person. He's been summoned, essentially. Yeah, there's a there's a line that I was looking up and I, I couldn't find it, but it's like, you know, thought and concentration and fear like if you put all these things into something you can manifest something because there's this cult that this girl belongs to and they are they manage to summon this empty vessel upon which this demon can inter intercept and and in the prologue you end up finding out that the the previous empty vessel was burning up because of the power of the empty man and they don't really even explain what the empty man's motivations are why he's killing anyone why he's doing anything why these people kill themselves they're not there's really nothing explained to you other than the very end where you realize that this guy it's very tragic because he's not real essentially he's just designed to be a vessel for the empty man so strange one right i i get it uh there's this kind of cult involved there's some spooky scenes there's also elements like i said of, of like there's so it borrows from so many other movies like quarantine it borrows a tiny bit from and there's like this middling plot so the the mystery is pretty good but it gets a little bit long and then the twist at the end is is kind of it's a little silly. I, I think it could have been done a little bit better. The CGI is not terrible, but I don't think the creature design, the, the original cre creature design is far more interesting. This thing's design is far more interesting than what they came up with, which was essentially just a cloaked skeleton looking figure, if there was even a skeleton. It's just kind of a thing. But if you're looking for something scary and you like tense psychological thrillers and you want something, I, I think this is a good one to check out. I can see why there's a bit of a cult following. I definitely would like to see more from this director. I'm hoping that he can do more things. Uh, David Pryor was, I thought, kind of impressive. So let's see, maybe we can IMDB him. David Pryor, just to take a look if he has any projects coming up. I should have researched this, but... I think it's worth saying that I thought this guy was a pretty good director. Am I not? I'm gonna have to find him from this way. And it gets my recommendation. I don't think it's like better than like a C plus, maybe like a B minus C plus. 
it, it's not really uh it's not fantastic but given what what happened with the director i i think that there's there's more potential here for this guy he seems like he's produced a ton he's directed a ton well let me see oh and he's connected with guillermo de, uh, del toro so clearly uh he's got some cred somewhere he did some girl with the dragon tattoo stuff mostly video documentary so this seems to be one of his one of his first actual uh directorial movies and a horror movie at that so hopefully we get to see more from this guy it's pretty good i i, I liked it uh not great but you know not worth watching i think it's worth your time so if you'd like to see any other uh short reviews from me please let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to check out if there's a movie I, maybe i haven't seen i've seen an awful lot of horror so maybe you can challenge me with something maybe i'll throw out a couple of tricky ones out there for you as well that you may not have seen that you think are worth checking out so again uh, my name is z i am from our reviews will kill you catch our full-length audio podcast uh, we live stream it here on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays. And you can download the audio podcast anywhere where you get podcasts all over the place. Spotify, you name it. But it's free and it's for you. You can check it out. So I hope we earned your subscription this time. If you'd like to see more content like this, especially some of the spooky little reviews here and, and my two cents, um, we'll keep it going. So that's all from me here today. And I'm on to the next 